We really do believe that somebody still knows that this person uh, is out there. Somebody knows who this person is and they haven't yet come forward. Terry Missy Beaver he showed up at the church to lead the 5 a.m. Camp Gladiator session. Surveillance video shows someone dressed in tactical gear with a jacket marked police. Police say he broke into the church before Beavers arrived, then assaulted her and left her unresponsive. A helmet and gloves help hide the intruder's identity. I can assure you, if I knew who the killer was, I'd arrest him myself. Uh, this is an extremely unusual situation for the city of Midlothian. We have a very, very safe community. Midlothian is about 26 miles away from Dallas. It's a very small community. And it's shocking that in a sheltered community of about 30,000 people, there may very well be a killer walking amongst them. She was inside the church, not realizing the intruder was already inside. And shortly thereafter, she was murdered inside of the church. She was a very loving mother of three and loved her husband very much. And they were a great family and we're very sad to lose her. Why is so much attention focused on this case? Of course, Missy is young and beautiful. She's a mother of some beautiful little girls. Your heart breaks to think of them being raised without their mother of all people. My two oldest children are, uh, they're completely aware of, of what has happened. My youngest one is not completely aware. But she seemed to be, in the words of her husband, a godly woman. Uh, she was very passionate about changing people's lives uh, with fitness. But what is really riveting about this to so many people is that if you look at the Beavers family, they had it all. They're young attractive, they've got a beautiful family, they have jobs, they seem happy in their community, they're staunch members at the Cowboy Church down the street. They're everything so many people want to be. I don't think she was at the wrong place at the wrong time. I feel like someone was after her and why, I don't know why. So often when women are murdered or assaulted, the first question is, well, why was she there? Well, actually that is irrelevant as to why Missy Beavers was at the Midlothian church at four o'clock in the morning. But I'll tell you why. Missy was at the church that morning because she regularly teaches a 5 a.m. gladiator boot camp style aerobics class. All right, here we go. Being here on the ground in front of this very quiet church in this extremely rural community, it feels almost eerie thinking about 45-year-old Missy Beavers who came to this church early in the morning to conduct her exercise class that she'd been doing many times before, thinking that she was safe inside this church. Missy gets there around 4.16 a.m. Imagine the picture. It's still dark outside. You can't see. It's been intermittently raining. The sky is dark. The wind is blowing outside the church. Typically, her class was held outdoors. But on this day, because of the weather, it was moved inside the church. 4.16 a.m., and the killer was waiting. There's a, a door with a window broken out, and also the, uh, the door latch has been broken. Uh, windows broken out here on the side of the church and then also on the back of the church. The police are saying that the suspect was likely inside the church wrecking the place, vandalizing everything for a full 30 minutes before Missy ever showed up. The perp gets into the church after 3 a.m. and is spotted on surveillance video Sauntering is really the only accurate way I can describe it. What we were hoping is that somebody who, who, you know, may see that gate and it may trigger something in their mind. You know, of course, we've got the, the police attire, the police garb that's been described in various ways. Maybe they could couple that information with other knowledge they had of, of specific people. Looking in cabinets, closing cabinets, not pilfering through to try to find something to steal, but just wandering up and down the halls. It kind of changed my opinion uh, when I initially saw it the other day. 
I felt like it was had a more feminine gait, feminine walk. Um, however, when I saw it this afternoon, just it was a more lengthy video, so you're able to get more of of the person's gait and their mannerisms. Look at the video. Uh, the person has a very distinct walk. Uh, there's a, just a very distinct uh, mannerism about this person that should be a very apparent to somebody. And it, it appears, they appear a little bit more masculine in these scenes. I can't tell if the person is a man or a woman. Um, this person appears somewhat tipsy, um, like they're under the influence possibly of something. You'll see them touch the wall, just kind of just walking through the hallway, and it's not a very normal-minded person. So the killer arrives well before Missy, then goes to the area that she will go to as well, almost as if waiting in ambush in that particular area where the perpetrator knows she's going to set up her audio equipment. The investigators are trying to put together a, a puzzle. We haven't yet established definitively the gender of the suspect. You know, they went through a lot of, uh, you know, it's a great effort to conceal their identity and so far, um, without definitive information on the gender, um, it could be male or female. What about race? We, you know, it appears, uh, just like you've seen in the video, it appears that they're lighter skinned. Um, again, we can't definitively say what race they are. We don't believe them to be uh, a dark skinned person. Carleton State University criminology professor GM Cox says over two dozen investigators are working the case and the FBI has joined in too. I think it's a very interesting case. I looked at the video. Uh, there's clearly planning. This is not a uh, haphazard crime. Any closer on the moment? No. Again, at, at, this, at this point, without a strong suspect focus, anything is on the table. 3.58 a.m. The mystery person is seen in the hallways of the local church. About 4 a.m., Missy arrives with her gear to set up for her class. Then the video mysteriously goes to black. Around 5 a.m., Missy's students arrive to find a horrifying scene. She's been murdered. Cops find broken glass on the floor. Nothing is missing. Missy's husband, Brandon, is baffled. It was uh, a shoddy amount of clothing to look like some type of uh, an enforcement officer. It wasn't tactical, real tactical clothing. And Jeremy says not just anyone can buy a cop uniform. First thing we're going to do is ask you for credentials. And then after you present your credentials of police, security, constable, sheriff, that gives you whatever authority to buy what you need. The real cops aren't revealing a motive for murder. They originally thought Missy surprised a burglar, but are no longer convinced that's what happened. That is from Crime Watch Daily. It certainly looks like the individual took time to learn the territory, got dressed into a uniform. Brandon Beaver's mother says her son has paid frequent trips to the police department since his wife's death, which according to the search warrant was caused by a head wound inflicted by an unknown instrument. Based on what this video surveillance shows, you can take the perpetrator and compare, for instance, their height to, say, a door frame that the purpose standing beside and you can calculate within an inch how tall the perpetrator is forensic video reconstruction is complete it's given us a height range for the suspect from approximately five foot two to five foot seven you can figure out their weight you can even figure out their shoe size that's a very detailed description of the killer Evil, you know, they're evil. Right now, I'm just in the anger phase. I want to find that person. I want to look at them in the face. I want them to die. It's been very frustrating, to be quite honest with you. It's, it's you know, we want an arrest as bad as anybody in this case. We want to bring that sense, you know, of safety back to the community and, and resolve this um, for the family as well as our community and the, and the public in general. So, you know, we'll continue to work until that's done. A lot of us, including myself, really feel that she was targeted. When I think and think about this, the only thing I can think of is, you know, I could see where a woman may be jealous of Missy. That is from NBC5 Dallas. She was a companion. We enjoyed fishing. Uh, we definitely, we enjoyed going to the beach. We spent a lot of time at the ocean. We, we've been together for 20 years. 
and we've managed to keep it, you know, held together all this time. Michaela's new show on HLN has it all. Congratulations on your damn show, girl. She's got the. I'm Ashley Banfield. Primetime Justice with Ashley Banfield. Weeknights at 8 Eastern starting October 17th on HLN. It was well known that Beavers taught an early morning fitness camp at Creekside Church of Christ. So I'm going to demonstrate just a few. The suspect broke into the church before Beavers arrived and roamed the church's hallways, then assaulted her. Who is this cloak killer and why Missy? Wisely, Midlothian PD have called in a team of crack digital analysts, and they will take every footstep, every movement. Uh, we see that the perp is right-handed. We will determine even about their hands, the size clothing they're wearing, maybe, to figure out who is the killer. We've also learned some additional information regarding the physical description of the suspect. The forensic video reconstruction is complete and it's given us a height range for the suspect from approximately five foot two to five foot seven. We hope this information will help us to sift through leads and eliminate, you know, suspects and information that comes in that's well outside of that range. In fact, they even go back to the scene of the crime late at night and retrace the killer's footsteps in order to create a comprehensive and very detailed description of Missy Beaver's murderer. The last remaining lead involves a car that pulls into the SWFA Sporting Goods parking lot at approximately 2 a.m. They're seen pulling into the parking lot and leaving just a few minutes later. Um, we believe that car is a 2010 to 2012 Nissan Altima. It's light in color, possibly silver. It's hard to tell as you remember it was raining that morning. Um, let me emphasize though, we don't have any reason whatsoever to believe that this car, its driver, or in any way involved in the murder of Missy Beavers. One month after the murder of Missy Beavers, Midlothian police say they still have no suspect. The search for a light-colored Nissan caught on camera near the scene that morning, they say, is simply an effort to check every clue. This is the last lead that hasn't been exhausted from that video canvassing. The majority of tips from the public have focused on the killer's distinct gait seen in the church surveillance video. Police tell us new analysis shows the killer is between 5'2 and 5'7, but even advanced software couldn't determine the person's weight or their gender. At first, we were told the church did not have video surveillance outside, but we have now learned, based on our own investigation, that the church does have video surveillance outside, but intermittent, working sometimes, not working other times, it was dark that night, it was rainy, stormy, picked up very little outside. At this point, without a strong suspect to focus, anything is on the table. While police haven't ruled out any suspects, they say they have confirmed husband Brandon Beaver's alibi. Attorney and former police officer Pete Schulte says anyone close to the victim has likely been checked out. They're going to make sure they can eliminate those particular people as suspects, and they start to broaden their search, and that just takes time. Investigator strategy, he says, will likely shift to make sure every possibility is examined. Unlike many homicides, Missy's body was found fairly quickly after her murder. How do we know that? Because her gladiator boot camp aerobic student showed up for their 5 a.m. workout class. So she's murdered a little after 4 a.m. They get there a little before 5 a.m. So her body has only been lying there, say 45 minutes max, before it's discovered. That's important. Why is that important? Because the sooner you reach a body, the more likely it is you're going to get forensic clues from that body. Just because it's been a month, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're not close to getting a suspect in this case. It just means that they're gonna have to keep digging, keep going on longer until they make an arrest. Marsha Tucker 
Missy's mother-in-law, I cannot even imagine having to tell Missy's girls that their mom is gone, one child as young as eight years old. Our prayers have been with you and your whole family. Please know that. I'd like to find out what kind of a person Missy was. Well, Missy was, uh, she was very goal-driven. Uh, driven. I mean, for her to get up at that time of morning, and she did that throughout the week to, you know, go teach people. And she just loved it. She just loved it. She was always on the go with her girls, you know, they're in sports and, you know, going here and there. Well, and Ms. Tucker, was did, her husband 100%. worried about her going to teach aerobics so early in the morning? Well, of course. I mean, you know, anybody would be. I mean, go to work and that, that early in the morning. I mean, you just, you can't help, you know, but having some concern. But she was trustworthy, you know, and thinking that everybody else was. Everyone, take a listen to the sister's theory. A lot of us, including myself, really feel that she was targeted. When I think and think about this, the only thing I can think of is, you know, I could see where a woman may be jealous of Missy. They stole, they put fear in our hearts. They changed these girls' lives, my niece's lives. They will never have a mother you know, help them with their wedding day, help them with their prom, boyfriends. They will never have that. That person took this from them, from us. That is from NBC5 Dallas. That is Missy's sister-in-law with the theory that this could, the killer could be a jealous wife. Hurt. Time is running out. If your son used Risperdal, have increased breast tissue, had breast surgery, or gynecomastia, call 1 800 Drug Hurt. Morning Express with Robin Mead. Weekdays at 6 on HLN. It's not a very normal minded person. Got dressed into a uniform. She was inside the church, not realizing the intruder was already inside, but she was murdered inside of the church. If I knew who the killer was. The person has a very distinct wall. Because I dressed him myself. Legal Eagles believe that Missy was murdered with the hammer. A hammer sometimes described as a pry bar or a crowbar initially, that you see the perpetrator swinging casually as they're wandering up and down the wall, the halls of the church. And another reason people believe that that is a murder weapon is because Missy died of multiple puncture wounds, puncture wounds to the head and the chest. Now, if it had been a knife, we would have expected to hear them described as stab wounds, but instead they are described by authorities as puncture wounds. That is consistent with the hammer or a pry bar or crowbar being the murder weapon. The last remaining lead involves a car that pulls into the SWFA Sporting Goods parking lot at approximately 2 a.m. They're seen pulling into the parking lot and leaving just a few minutes later. Um, we believe that car is a 2010 to 2012 Nissan Altima. It's light in color, possibly silver. It's hard to tell as you remember it was raining that morning. Um, let me emphasize though, we don't have any reason whatsoever to believe that this car, its driver, or in any way involved in the murder of Miss Beavers. In the interest of following up on every possible lead, this is the last lead that hasn't been exhausted from the video camera scene. This is actually a major breakthrough in this case. I want to see the car again as Stephen Becker with Robson Forensic is telling us his analysis. Whose car is this? And why are they less than a mile away from Missy's murder scene? Go ahead, Stephen. Well, unfortunately, you can't make out the license plate in this video. That would give us a positive identification as to whose vehicle that would have been. Why? Why can't this be enhanced? I mean, 
uh, can't NASA help us? Isn't there no way to enhance this to get even one character, one letter, one number off the uh, tag? That's a great point, Nancy. A lot of people in a lot of movies you'll see, they enhance the video and suddenly you can miraculously see objects that were previously obscured in the video. Um, what you have here is you have a highly reflective license plate. Specialized cameras called license plate recognition camera systems can identify license plates both in the dark and in high light conditions because what they do is they focus in on the area of the license plate and they use uh, lighting with the camera. Many people believe, based on the gait or the saunter of the perpetrator, that it is a woman. However, if it is a woman, it defies every rule of homicide method and assessment. It's very rare that a woman will kill another woman by bludgeoning. As far as communicating prior to her camps, no, I mean, she got there pretty early. Okay, so and you hadn't heard from her that morning? No. When would, did you guys speak the night Yes. And did you, what yes. did you say to her? Uh, every day for the last, uh, Every day for the last 10 months, uh, she has made it a point to text me at work that she loves me. And have a good day, honey. Who can turn the world on with a smile? Dear friend. Now, maybe it was tickle gear. Me, Sunday, October 23rd, 9 p.m. I'll see you there, friend. Police say this person in black tactical gear killed Beaver first breaking into the Creekside Church of Christ before she showed up to teach an early fitness class. It's thinking someone she was someone was stalking her, or now maybe it was just a you know, it's just a crazy person. You can't make sense out of crazy. I don't know if it's uh, business related or some kind of jealousy. I've pretty much exhausted every scenario in every uh, avenue that I can think of, of, of who could have done this. I'm discouraged to the point where I truly want to just reach out to this individual myself. As odd as it may sound, I, I, can, I can truly forgive you for what you've done, but only if you come forward, turn yourself in, um, do what's right. You know, don't live the rest of your life uh, with this on your heart because it will eat you like cancer the same applies with my family we need closure this is going to eat us eat us alive for many years to come that's from fox 4 kdfw this was no burglary gone wrong nothing was stolen from the church in fact missy's ipad her cell phone her purse was all sitting in her car still the car has been taken inventoried and returned to her husband brandon beavers so clearly it holds no significant clue. At this point, none of the family, friends, or co-workers of Missy Beavers are considered suspects. Despite various theories circulating through social media, none of the people named in our affidavits are now suspects. Several family members seem to also be at the center of the public's fo focus. Um, I just want to be clear that the Beavers family, including Mr. Beavers and his father, have been cooperative, forthcoming, and provided detailed alibis that have all been corroborated through independent sources. Missy Beavers had some communication with at least nine people leading up to the day she died. Police used a search warrant to access those nine, and the phone calls and text messages they made. Could any of them be tied to the person seen in this video? Until Missy's killer is caught, I will stop short of saying that any person is absolutely excluded but to be clear, none of Missy's family are at the focus of this investigation. Late today, investigators told CBS 11, none of those nine are defined as suspects now. We have nothing to substantiate any connection between them 
and a murder suspect, Assistant Chief Kevin Johnson said today. We've learned a lot about Missy and her husband Brandon's relationship. Uh, we've learned most of this through search warrants, secret search warrants that we obtained. They reveal that there was a lot of strife in the marriage. Um, that could be argued about every marriage, especially when you have children and both partners are working to support the family. <laughs> a family in grief embraced the community, came in support. You guys, uh, you guys embody the spirit of my wife. Brandon Beavers told the crowd his wife was passionate about fitness and well respected by the students she taught. I wasn't terribly good at praising my wife for what she did. Uh, that's, that's one of my regrets. We learned that there was a financial crisis going on in the home, a lot of financial trouble. Not only that, the search warrant reveals that there were intimate relationships or relationship between one of the married individuals, Missy or her husband, Brandon, and other people, uh, clearly indicating that police believe somebody was having an affair. That certainly muddies the water. Police confirm Beaver's husband, Brandon, knew about her infidelity in the relationship, and he told police about it. Police extracted deleted information from Missy Beaver's phone, information that confirmed an affair. Most people in society, they don't have their baggage strewn out in public like this, uh, but the problems that we've encountered, I, I would have to say 80% of society deals with the same problems. And in our particular case, uh, we were dealing with our problems and we were, you know, attempting to overcome. And that's, that's what kept us together. That's from Fox 4 KDFW. We know that Missy was a devoted mother to her little girls. We know that her life was her family. She decided to become physically fit, and for a 40-some-odd-year-old mother of three, she was uh, very fit and uh, transformed on an un unimaginable level. She was a, her body pretty well sold her abilities in transforming and helping other people. And these boot camp workouts, she was devoted to helping other people improve their lives through re-sculpting their bodies and their self-esteem. Completely devoted, would spend from about 10.30 to one o'clock every day in a gym, religiously, never missed her classes and spent most of her days either working out, doing boot camp, or driving her girls to this practice and that practice and this appointment and that appointment. Uh, when I finally arrived in Biloxi uh, around 7.30, which was later than I was supposed to be there, you know, I spoke to her and uh, she said good night and it was still about eight o'clock and I, I called her anyway probably around 9 or 9.30 to tell her I love her, and she was already half asleep, and that's the last time I spoke to her. Sure, we could have stacked these tires, or put... Effective relief. Nasacort. Guaranteed, or your money back. Weekend Express with Lynn Smith. Weekends at 7 on HLN. Grainy video of a 2 a.m. mystery car emerging. A bizarre twist in the Missy Beavers murder investigation. Multiple friends of Missy saying Missy reaching out to them from beyond the grave. And tonight is Missy's killer playing a cruel game, taunting friends, family, police. This as Missy's husband breaks his silence on their marital woes after cops allege intimate relationships outside their marriage. Lead investigators tell NBC News someone created another Facebook page in Missy Beaver's name, a fake and then systematically started making friend requests, targeting Missy's students from the Camp Gladiator workout classes she led. 
That's NBC's Today. Friends of Missy suddenly start getting Facebook messages from Missy after her murder. The first thing I want to do, Chris Spargo, is hear what are the messages? What is being sent from Missy's account to her friends? Well, friends of Missy have been saying that they've been getting Facebook friend requests from a profile that has been created under her name, obviously well after her own death. Now, wait a minute. How bizarre is that? Your friend is murdered brutally, and then suddenly you begin getting Facebook friend requests from her. That must have really upset her friends and they were also, who else were they, Chris Spargo with DailyMail.com? Who, who, were they friends? Were some of them her exercise students that go to her boot camp? Exactly. It was, it was a whole bunch of people she knew. It wasn't just friends. It was also some students and some acquaintances. It was a rather large group of people who've been receiving these friend requests. So how many do you think there are, Chris, that are getting friend requests from Missy? We know that it's at least over 30, and it's so many that police had to finally make a comment because it had become such a problem. The Creekside Church sitting in Midlothian is in a very, very rural area. Why is that significant? It means that fewer people would have seen, either intentionally or inadvertently, the killer. There are no big buildings around it. There's not surveillance across the street from a restaurant or a pub or a shopping center or a private home. It causes another problem because the cell phone data, there's only one cell phone tower feeding into that area. Will that help or hinder the investigation? CBS 11 sources say detectives will now be getting help from the NYPD and its high-tech tracking devices. It's unclear specifically what technology they'll be using, but the NYPD has been known to operate stingrays. According to the American Civil Liberties Union, the department has relied on stingrays in at least a thousand cases. The device, also known as cell site simulators, mimics cell phone towers. It will automatically connect to the stingray without any control of me, the user. And what the Stingray then does is it mines data off the phone very quickly. Including the serial number as well as other data, which can be then used to identify who the phone belongs to. Former police officer and criminal defense attorney Pete Schulte says if investigators do in fact use a Stingray, they'd focus on the church where the mystery person in tactical gear attacked Missy and also the Beaver's neighborhood. If somebody keeps coming back to the crime scene, which happens a lot in murder cases, they're going to be able to identify that person because of the data that's coming from the stingray. The ACLU says Texas is one of dozens of states where law enforcement agencies have the technology. Highly controversial because they can gather not just suspect information, but also data from the phones of people who just happen to be in the area. The device in of itself is very invasive and nobody can do anything to stop it. When it's activated, cell phones will automatically connect. You don't have anybody driving by the church at that time of the morning, very little traffic going by. So all that combines to make it a much harder case to crack. You're not going to get an eyewitness, let's just say that. How did a local dry cleaner get in the middle of a murder investigation? Well, I'll tell you how. About 96 hours after Missy is found dead in the Creekside Church in Midlothian, her father-in-law her husband's father takes bloody clothes to a local dry cleaner. The father-in-law was pretty forthcoming, though. He spoke to the media. He gave a statement to police saying that their little dog got into an altercation, a dog fight with a much bigger dog, and actually died. They rushed the dog to the vet, and they got dog animal blood on their clothes. We now know the scope of her friends that are receiving Facebook messages from Missy after her death is expanding. People that she saw or spoke to at the Austin Fitness Convention the weekend before she's murdered are getting them. People that go to her boot camp class are getting them. Friends are getting them. Uh, let me understand something, Chris Bargo. Do police think they understand what's happening? They really don't. Now, it could be something as simple as a glitch, maybe, in deactivating her original account if something went wrong, or it could be someone playing a horrifically 
ill and inappropriate joke, or you know, it could be something even more sinister. Not only this, we discover that her husband is speaking out. Chris Spargo, he is pretty convinced the killer is a woman. Yeah, he is saying that he's really convinced it's a woman and he's really convinced it's someone that knew his wife and had something against her. He points out the fact that when she was found, she was still wearing her wedding ring and it clearly wasn't a robbery. This person was clearly after his wife, he believes. So Missy Beavers was wearing her wedding band at the time she's murdered. If the killer was intent on burglarizing or stealing, why leave behind the wedding band? Look at that, it looks like diamonds in it to me. Not only that, her iPad, her iPhone, other items were left behind. Clearly, this was no random burglary gone awry. What do we know about the husband finally breaking his silence on their marital woes outlined by police, including intimate relationships outside the marriage? Yeah, I mean, he's being very open about the fact that everything's being laid out right now. He, the fact that they are going through her correspondences, they are investigating the fact that there may have been relationships with other men. And he's also saying that he doesn't want to not be considered a person of interest in this case. He wants everyone to be treated like a person of interest because he wants to get to the bottom of this and he wants some answers. See me. See me. Don't see with forensic video absolutely on HLN until Missy's killer is caught I will stop short of saying that any person is absolutely excluded I believe she was targeted that was uh, a shoddy amount of clothing to look like some type of uh, an enforcement officer Forensic video reconstruction is complete and it's given us a height range for the suspect from approximately five foot two to five foot seven. And now the police running out of leads in her murder. What's so odd is that it seems to me, of course the friends state that Missy is speaking from beyond the grave, but it seems to me Someone has hacked into her Facebook account and is taunting friends, family, and in effect, police. So how do you track down? I mean, who else would do that beside the killer who had clearly been following her on Facebook the whole time? So how do we track that down? When police try to go back and look at it, it's not there anymore. One person, one of these friends got a screen grab of the friend request from Missy after she's murdered. There's an ongoing investigation, so the first thing the police did was go to Facebook with a preservation warrant and say, we want you to preserve all data related to this account. The police do have everything. It seems to me, just logically speaking, that this is the killer doing this. Why? What sick thrill would Missy's killer get out of taunting her friends and family by sending them messages from her Facebook after she's been murdered? Well, it's a very, very sick thing to do. It's based in jealousy. It's based in a lot of sick meanness, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's the killer. It could be somebody who wants to be her and is pretending to be her and taking over her identity also. But at the end of the day, it's someone who is very, very disturbed. You, know, you just said dangerous. something interesting, Dr. Charles Sophie, about taking over her identity. Um, this is someone obviously that followed her moves, that knew when she was working out, where she, where she was working out, who her friends were. She had just been away for the weekend in Austin at a fitness convention. And now you said those words, taking over her life, even taking over her Facebook friends. Absolutely. And it's a not a, it's not uncommon where someone will step into someone else's life. They've been tracking them for a while and they become them. And if they're really disturbed, they really believe they are that person. And then there's LinkedIn. Some guy, a married man, had been sending and receiving very flirtatious messages on LinkedIn back and forth between him and Missy Beavers, which were immediately deleted. 
Missy's family has been speaking out. Now, interesting, her own blood family has said very little. Her stepmother-in-law, however, has now written two open letters to the killer, and I find them very revealing. For instance, in one of them, she refers to the killer in your shoes too big for you, which to me implies that the killer, she believes, is a woman, as police have suggested. She also goes on to say, they're on to you. Wouldn't you rather turn yourself in as opposed to getting arrested in front of your family? I still believe that the police are leaning on the husband because he knows the network, the tree of people that his wife was connected to. And perhaps he knows who she was having an affair with or she knew who he was having an affair with. And maybe it's a disgruntled uh, partner or husband or wife of whoever these people were having affairs with. If you look at the stepmother-in-law's open letters to the killer, it's highly suggestive that the Beavers family has a pretty good idea who the killer is. During an evening church service, 38-year-old Steve Robards fell ill.